A little while ago, my friend Nami and I set out hoping to catch some carpenter ant queens during a nuptial flight. What we found instead were brick honeypot ants, Myrmecocystis testaceus. After digging up some chambers, I found three queens, the first I've ever caught, and now they are safely in their test tubes, undergoing the greatest challenge of their lives. This is the story of my three honeypot queens and their journeys to start their own colonies. In my opinion, the founding stage, while laborious for them, is probably the most rewarding as an ant keeper. There's something special about witnessing the trial and birth of a new colony from a single queen. It's an intimate process that's usually hidden from us underground, and I want to share that process with you. Meet Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, our soon-to-be matriarchs. Through experience, I've learned a couple things about keeping honeypot ants. One, they need heat. These are desert ants, and I learned this lesson too late with the gumdrops. However, this particular species likes it a bit cooler than other honeypots, around 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Two, they're also more sensitive and delicate than other species until the colonies mature, which is why I have three for redundancy, and I'm only checking on them every two weeks. After a couple weeks, I saw a little cluster of eggs from Blossom. Bubbles had a handful of eggs here and there on the sides of the tube and on the sponge. And from my out of focus camera work, Buttercup had a few blurry eggs bunched together and managed to stick a couple on the ceiling. I didn't get a lot of great footage from this week, so let's skip ahead to week four. There were a lot more visible eggs this time. Still pretty hard to see them against the sand, which is there so that the larvae can spin their cocoons but I counted around 30 eggs for Blossom, which is amazing. This really made me happy to see since there weren't many last time. Time to check on Bubbles, who was looking after about 22 eggs. And finally, Buttercup had around 25. All three of these girls were on the right track, and we'll see you in another couple weeks. When you've got a new queen, it can be really hard not to check on them, but it's really important that you leave them alone as much as you can so they don't get stressed and eat their eggs. I learned this lesson that, oh my god, there were tons of eggs. Look at all those. Blossom has been busy. There were over 60 eggs in there. Let's check in on Bubbles. Hers were especially difficult to count against the grains of sand, but after careful examination, I counted around 50 eggs. Good job, girl. Last, but certainly not least, was Buttercup, who was definitely in the lead with around 75 eggs. These numbers seemed insanely high to me, but maybe that's because last year I raised carpenter ants, who grow a lot slower. Then we were seeing around 6 to 7 eggs for their first round of workers. I was on a call with Nami, talking about ants, as one does when you're obsessed with ants, and told him about how well the queens were doing. Oh, they have a ton of eggs. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you though: Are there eggs by any chance scattered? Let me let me check. On okay. That. Okay. Queen A, yes. Queen B, scattered. Queen, yeah, they're like all over the place. Why? Cool. Um, I don't know how else to say this because I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but it sounds like those queens are probably infertile. Oh shoot! <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. So wait, if they are fertile, they clump them together. Typically, right? But the scatteredness, that's like a very common behavior by ants that are infertile. That probably means that they can lay a lot more eggs too, which is what we're seeing if they've got 60, 70 eggs. Well, basically reason that's happening is because typically what happens is queens will actually lay infertile eggs. They're called like trophic eggs. Basically they're eggs that are just gonna be used as food for larvae. So what that queen is probably doing is it's laying infertile eggs, also laying trophic eggs. But those trophic eggs, which would typically get fed back to the larvae, aren't being fed because there's no larvae to feed. So it's this never ending cycle of just laying eggs that nothing is being done with. That's why you're seeing all those eggs. You were telling me that the infertility rate of honeypots is like super high. So with the spring honey pots, the spring flying ones, it tends to be a little higher. What happens in the springtime is sometimes one colony flies and another one doesn't. So let's say colony A flies and colony B doesn't. There's a lot of inbreeding that happens, or perhaps if there's not inbreeding, the queens mm. which fly can't find males to mate with. Sometimes they'll drop their wings thinking that they're fertile, and then other times they won't. Dang. Yeah. 
it's a big bummer, right? And that's part of why, you know, as an ant seller, you know, I don't like to sell ant queens because then, you know, you buy an ant from me, there isn't a guarantee of them being fertile. Like at the end of the day, I can't like manually go and check. And then on top of it, I mean, there's founding risks. Once you get a colony, your chances go up much higher. Needless to say, this was devastating news. Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, who we've been bonding with and rooting for over the last six weeks, were all infertile. So, is this the end of the story? Well, not necessarily. You see, I may have left out a few details about that day we caught them. We actually caught an additional five queens that I didn't tell you about that have also been incubating their eggs on a heat cable this whole time. I really only want one colony, but for the reasons Nami just explained, he convinced me to get a bunch of them just to be safe. So I did. But I thought three was better from a storytelling perspective, and thus... The Powerpuff Girls were born! Okay, but hold up a minute. That doesn't mean that the other five queens were fertile either. I hadn't been following their progress as closely, and for all I knew, the eggs could be scattered as well, or they could be dead. I started with Queen D, and lo and behold, she had a nicely clumped pile of eggs. So that's at least one viable beacon of hope. Now for Queen E, who didn't look like she had any eggs at all. Sorry girl, it's not your fault. Queen F's turn. She had a few, but much like the socks in my room, they were not all in the same place. This wasn't looking good so far. Come on Queen G, show us what you got. Thankfully, she too had a cluster of precious eggies and a couple rejects on the side of the tube. Look, if you're gonna play favorites with your children, at least wait till they're born so they can really feel that rejection. And finally, Queen H, who I could see right off the bat was crushing it. She had a tight group of eggs, and just look at how full her gaster is. She is bursting at the seams and has a lot more eggs on the way. Well, how about that? Unfortunately, it didn't work out for our original trio but we found exactly three more to take their place. So we're just gonna do a little switcheroo and make these ladies the new Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. Three in, three out. Who's gonna know? Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. And if you take issue with that, remember that these are ants. So let's leave our new stars for another two weeks and let them work their motherly magic. Whoa, Blossom already has five cocoons, four larvae, and about 13 eggs which we now know might just be food for the larva. Amazing. Bubbles was just a little behind, but still doing well with about nine eggs and six larva. And Buttercup now has about 30 eggs grouped in piles around her, but I do see about four larva, so they are developing. Then I found something interesting when checking on the remaining two queens. Queen E, who hadn't laid any eggs, didn't make it. But Queen F, whose eggs were scattered last time, are now clumped in a neat little pile. I don't know what this means, but Queen F is getting a name. Hmm. Fiona. Faith. Frankie. Faye. Francine. Debbie. Yep, she's gonna be Debbie. It is shocking that only three of the eight queens are probably fertile. That's a 37% fertility rate. Another good reason why it's safer to order young colonies rather than queens especially for species like honeypots and harvesters that are highly sensitive in the founding stage. If you've been thinking about getting your own colonies, Nami's site, Atlantis.com, is having a massive opening sale for 50% off. He's also giving my viewers an additional 15% off with the promo code Cole's Ants. And they really do focus on setting people up with healthy colonies. But the journey of our three heroes, plus Debbie, is far from over. Will they successfully launch and rule their own dynasties? Could Debbie be fertile after all? We'll just have to wait and see as the story of the ants marches on. If you enjoyed this story, drop a like and check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.